James Kaufman, World News Report Today. Today is October 30th, 2023. Noon Central here in the U.S. God bless you and yours no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. You're looking at Earth's electromagnetic shield, and there's definitely some disturbances. Looks like for at least the last four hours, we've seen some pretty heavy spikes to up and above 400 hertz. And prior to that, we've also seen spiking between 12, around 1300 UTC time, again, around 10 UTC time. Now, this does not go all the way to, i.e., real time. Real time would be 1800. It would be right about here, but it is fairly close as opposed to usual. And wouldn't you know it, the Schumann residence is lit up like a Christmas tree during those exact time periods 10, 13, 14, 15, 16, and probably through on to 18. We'll be able to see a little bit more information with a six day comparison. These Actual Schumann resonance spikes are off the chart. You can see how hard they hit the geophone up here. This chart ends at about 105 hertz, so it's hard to tell how strong the spikes actually were. You can see here from our six day comparison, this is going to be the 1800 mark. Uh, it's not up to date quite yet. It is 1800 UTC time exactly right now. So we are missing some data, but this is the first active day in quite a few. We did have some, well, some time periods that it looked like the modeling charts were turned off. So I don't know what that meant, but right now these spikes are going off the charts. These charts ending right at 50 hertz. We know they go over 105 hertz as well. The question is, is how high do they go? Jumping over to our geophone hourly strips. Each line is an hour UTC time. And actually, this is the 10 o'clock hour where we saw the first large impact. And you do see that impact. The problem with this is they end at the 14th hour UTC time. So we're missing three additional strips here, which would probably be indicative of continuous geophone strikes here. Why are we missing so much time? That I cannot uh, answer. All right, heading over to our actual models here, and I'm checking to make sure this is the right date, and it is. They show activity starting here right about 7 UTC time, we did not have that much view on any of the models. Uh, 7 UTC time, we see those geophones getting hit, the ULF, the LF, our second SR frequency. Uh, we were looking for a large hit at 10, and there it is right there at 10, and additional hits from 12 on. This one actually is going to end at 1500 UTC time, still, still missing three hours of data. Very, very strange that these models are lacking and they're uh, well, three hours behind. I know a lot of people think that CERN has a lot to do with what's going on with the Schumann resonance and the excessive spiking, but I don't believe it has anything to do with it whatsoever. I think what we're seeing here is again our our atmosphere collapsing per the pole shift and because of that uh, our well any type of agitator in this case it's going to be lightning bounces off a lower part of the atmosphere hitting the geophones the ULF the ELF sensors much harder than usual making the spikes much stronger than when the models were set up themselves here we are over to the area of the modeling station. We will zoom in here, but we can see that there is a very large thunderstorm over that area. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what's causing the Schumann resonance spikes. This with a combination of our fields 
dripping down to the south. Uh, our shields are very negative currently, and this allows these agitators to bounce off what's called the D region, or the closest region to Earth, and then back towards the sensors, hitting them two, three times harder than they used to when they bounce off the F or G region. So that is what y'all are seeing with these higher spikes, and they're going to get higher and higher as our atmosphere collapses more and more. You'll never see space weather hit. At the same time, you'll see these actual spikes in this human residence. Let's go ahead and zoom into our modeling station. We know just about where it is here. And what we'll see is heavy thunderstorms here. You can see lightning every once in every once in a while, but you can assure yourself that this area is filled with lightning currently. And as we zoom in, there's our modeling station right there. So that's what's happening here. We're seeing a thunderstorm over the modeling station. And since our atmosphere is not being hit by space weather right now, it has, well, collapsed and is waiting on its next challenge. Thus, these agitators are bouncing off a much lower part of our atmosphere and hitting the sensors at our model at a much stronger capacity and speed god bless you guys i hope y'all do understand share subscribe and always remember that anything's possible in bizarro world